Hi guys, in this video we're going to be refactoring this code that I saw on Twitter. And what we've got here is some Python code that, first of all, won't run because it's got a syntax error here at the top. And it looks a lot like Java code. And this is something you see a lot when beginner programmers are starting to work in Python. If they come from other programming languages, they often resort to some of the same things that you would resort to in Java, but in Python. And you don't have to. Python lets you be a bit clearer and a bit less verbose, which is one of the benefits. So what we've got here is a simple application that defines a class used to simplify accessing properties of some database. And the database is this details variable. And it's in profile.py and at the moment it's just an in-memory database which contains two uh, values the ID123 and the ID124, and associated to those values are the names of people. So you can think of these as ID to name mappings. Then in the class get profile, you store self.profile ID as whatever is passed into the object constructor, and then you define a get name method that returns that piece of data for the profile ID that we stored. So if we pass in 123 as the argument to this init method, then person.getName is going to give us back the name associated with that ID in our database, so it should give you Rolf Smith. The first thing to do when we're refactoring this code is, of course, run it through a linter, or some sort of program that's going to help you identify simple mistakes in Python code that could prevent your program from running or from doing what you really want it to. And the first thing that my linter tells me, which is, by the way, just the one running on Visual Studio Code, is that this is probably incorrect. So it should be from profile, import details. That is the way to do it in Python. The other way around, import details from profile doesn't work in Python. The next thing to do is to have a look at your class and see if there are any lines of code that you don't really need because they don't do anything. And the first thing I'm going to remove is the brackets because the brackets are not necessary unless you are inheriting from another class. So we're going to take those away. Then we actually don't need this init line here that calls the constructor of the superclass because it doesn't pass any parameters to the constructor and indeed the constructor is just a default object so this is not going to do anything. So we can also get rid of that. The next thing to think about is whether you need this comment here. The class is called get profile, so you're probably going to be using it to get a profile. And therefore, this comment, I would say, is redundant, it's not necessary. You can add it back in later on if your class gets larger and you really need to describe why you're doing something in this class. But for now, we don't need it. Remember that comments should generally be used to describe why you chose to do something the way you chose to do it and not what you're doing. Ideally, your code should be able to tell the reader what it's doing just by looking at the code. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to always in Python try to get rid of get. The get word is very used in Java because in Java the common theme is that properties such as this self.profile ID should be private and they should only be accessed with a getter and should only be set with a setter. But in Python we don't have to do that because the motto in Python is that we're all consenting adults here so properties are all public and you can access them or change them if you want and if you really want somebody not to change one of your properties you just put an underscore in front of it and that tells people that ideally you shouldn't be changing this property. But because we don't need the getters and setters in Python we're actually going to get rid of the gets. We're going to change that to name and we're going to change that to just profile. Then, of course, we're going to fix that here, and we're going to fix the call down there. Ideally, the code that you're running with a class or with any other piece of code that you're using in that, you should also update as you update your class. Otherwise, you're going to have to come back at the end and make all the changes, and you may miss some. So it's good to keep both the code you're using and the code you're running in sync. Then we've got one final thing that we can improve here. And there are two ways of doing this, and it's that we're accessing the property of a person, or what looks like the property of a person, the person's name. I'd like to not have to call a function to get the name. I would just like to do person.name. But at the moment, we can't do that because it is a function. And the reason why it's a function is because this name is not something static that is unchanging throughout the lifetime of the profile. It is something that is dynamically retrieved from a database every time you get the name. 
So that is an important part of this functionality. Whenever you call the name method, it goes to the database and it finds the name for this profile ID. So it still needs to be a method, but we can decorate it with the at property decorator in Python. And what that does is it allows the caller to treat this method as a property. So we no longer need the function call there. We can just access it as person.name and to the caller, we're accessing a property, but we actually will always have the updated version from the database. Now I'll say at this point that I'm not a big fan of this approach. I think that having a property that can change over time as your database changes can be a little bit misleading. So I would actually make this into a non-changing property of the object by doing self.name equal details.get profile ID, just like that. And I would get rid of this entirely. And then because at the moment we're not using self.profile ID for anything, I would also get rid of that. And this actually ends up much simpler and we no longer need that other method or to store profile ID here. The reason to do this is that every time you create a person, you're going to retrieve their name and then you can use that person's name throughout your entire code without fear of it changing halfway through. Whereas if you're relying on the database for doing that every time, it might change without you realizing. Of course, both approaches are good depending on what you want your code to do, but it's something to keep in mind if you are using the at property decorator. Finally, something else that you may want to do if you're using Python 3.6 or later is you may want to type hint your arguments and your return values if you do have any. And what that does is it allows the caller to determine what they should pass into your methods. So in here, we're saying that profile ID should be a string. So if we pass in something that's not a string, such as one, two, three, then Python or your linta should tell you that something might be amiss here. At the moment, because I only have the default linta running, it's uh, not going to do that for me. But nonetheless, it should if you're using something like PyCharm or if you're using a proper linta like PyLint. Finally, what I've just done there just a little bit ago is I have applied a better styling. So I've left two blank lines before and after a class definition just to give it a little bit of room to breathe while you're reading the code. So it's a little bit easier to go through. That's everything for this video. Just a quick refactoring of some code that I saw on Twitter. If you have any code that you'd like me to take a look at and potentially refactor as well, just send it my way, put it in the comments or give me a Dropbox link or something like that. You can send it to me on Twitter as well if you'd like. The link is at the bottom and in the description below. That's everything though. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you in the next one.